In this video, we are going to study the transverse section of cinchona bark. It shows a well-developed periderm, a wide cortex, and a large secondary phloem. First, you can see the cells of the cork, several layers of thin-walled, flat polygonal cells with reddish-brown content impregnated with subarim. Below that, we can see two to three layers of thin-walled cells Without any cellular content, it is called phallogen. They are rectangular cells. And below that, there is six to eight layers of thin-walled rectangular cells without any cellular content. They're like cork. They are arranged at times in radial rows. This cork, phallogen, phalloderm are all a part of periderm. After the periderm portion, we can find the cortex, which consists of several layers of thin-walled, tangentially elongated cells containing reddish-brown matter. Some of the cortical cells are filled with microsphenoidal crystals of calcium oxalate, while the rest with minute starch grains. Calcium oxalate crystals are 2 to 6 micron long whereas starch grains are 6 to 10 micron in diameter. Isolated secretory cells are also found in the cortical parenchyma. Then comes the third portion, which is the secondary phloem, which comprises of phloem parenchyma, phloem fibers, and medullary rays. Medullary rays are 1 to 3 seriate. They extend up to the cortex cells radially elongated and contain starch grains. That is, they are 1 to 3 cells wide. Phloem fibers, characteristic of synchona bark, occur intermingled with phloem parenchyma and in between medullary rays. Fibers are numerous, mostly isolated at times in groups of 2 to 3 rounded to oval in various sizes, yellow in color, thick-walled, strongly lignified with a small lumen and stratifications. That's all for the TS of Cinchona Bark.